All right, Sunset Rewind back at you. Everybody's played nine games now, Coach. We've got one week of the regular season left, so what happened this week? What a weekend for Sunset League football. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> yeah, not one, but two rival games. Yep. You had another team playing to win the championship for the third straight year, something that hasn't happened since the 50s. Wow. And we'll get that, to that in a little bit uh, later down on the show. But uh, let's start with the big one, the feature game of the week. CDM, Newport Harbor, Battle, Battle of the Bay. Battle of the Bay for uh, Supremacy in Newport Beach. That thing was rocking. In fact, Cole, can you go ahead and pull it up? Let's just get to this. Um, early on, it was all Newport Harbor. Colton Joseph, quarterback, is going to find cash money hinge him in the back of the end zone. He's just running a go route. Now, look, CDM's got two defenders in perfect position to make the play, but cash money just you know does what he does best, catch touchdowns. And look at that. It that was, was rocking at the stadium. Great they were start fired for up. the Sailors. That, that start couldn't have gone better for them. Just like that at 7-0. But they were equally dominant on defense. Watch Robbie Crowell, the linebacker. is going to sniff out the quarterback. Scrapes across, fills. Boom. Takes down Razor. And again, 7 nothing. They'd get the ball back, get in field goal cool position, have a chance to go up 10 nothing. But your boy, Aiden Walsh, and we'll talk about him a little <laughs> bit later, is going to split the tight end of the wing, get in there, prevents... Harbor from going up 10 nothing. That's a great job by Walsh there to get in there and block that. I mean, that could have been, you know, changed the momentum of that game a lot, but it, he kept it, uh, you know, from getting out of hand with the Sailors there. Yeah, and now watch Jacob, Jacob Jerzyk. The nose tackle is going to do a good job. Again, Harbor still playing great defense, fights off the center, great tackles job. Razor in the backfield, gets a sack. That's a great effort there. So early on, it is all Newport Harbor. As we go to the second quarter, still up 7 nothing. Harbor's going to continue to attack. This time, again, cash money hinge him. The two receivers are going to run post routes. And again, CDM's in perfect uh, position yeah, to break it up. right there. But watch cash money. All he does, catch touchdowns. Catches between two guys, and then there's another safety behind him. And look at the crowd. It was rocking. The stands on the other side oh. were shaking. It was, they were so fired up. That was so, so again, awesome. 14 nothing. Harbor's looking great. Do they pull off the upset? Well, not if David Reja has anything to say about it. He's going to go to one of his outstanding... Wide receivers, Russell Weir. Again, a post route. Seemed to be a popular pattern on the night. It's going to hit him right down the middle. Pretty good coverage, but, you know, just like that, Yeah. 14-7. And now it's CDM's turn to celebrate. Their fans were fired up, rocking on this side as well, and uh, just a great atmosphere. But CDM wasn't done. Later in the second quarter, now I want you to watch this. Harbor's going to blitz their inside and their outside backer. Zach Giuliano, the tight end, they couldn't have called a better play against this defense. These two wide receivers aren't even running routes. They're blocking. So you're going to run your tight end away from the blitz. Now this linebacker has to make up all that difference in ground and space. No way. Just free money. Gets good blocking from the wideouts. And just like that, we're tied. All right. Let's fast forward to the fourth quarter. All right. Now Harbor's down seven. It's fourth down. I want you to watch Colton Joseph and Mason Kubicek. Harbor's going to try to run a screen to the right. It doesn't develop, so Kojo does what he does best, tries to make something out of nothing. Now there's the first down. There's Mason, and there's Kojo. It's a battle of two wills. And Mason trips him up just a couple yards short of the first down. It's They're going to hang ball. on. And then late in the game, up seven, all they got to do is kill some clock. Razor, the quarterback, is going to follow his lead blocker. And take it off. And that will just about do it. I remember when that play happened, watching that, I'm like, oh. That's... So Harbor still got a chance to get a stop, and sometimes it just isn't meant to be. Watch this. The snap is going to go over the quarterback's head, but miraculously Perfect bounce. goes right back <laughs> in to his hands. Perfect he couldn't have gotten any luckier. luckier. The defense back is going to come up for a second, but does recover. So the coverage is still there. And then, of course, Cooper Hoke, their outstanding wide receiver, and now the quarterback's going to do his best Joe Montana to Dwight Clark impersonation in the corner of the end zone. Oh, wow. They're going to go up 14, and that was that. And so a great game. I think both oh, teams awesome. battled. Uh, Harbor got that great start, but CDM did what they had to do to recover. And here they are celebrating. Um, just a great moment for CDM. And I got to tell you a, a quick story as I watch the celebration <laughs> on the field. Uh, my senior year, I'm playing at El Toro. We're 9-0, right. number one in the, in the county. We're playing Capo, who's 9-0, number two in the county. The game comes down to a last-second field goal. Of course, we miss it. Mm. So the second that game ends, their fans just rush the field. And you couldn't even shake hands because there's just such a maelstrom of, of people. 
And we were on the far end of the stadium, so we had to go all the way across the field to get to the locker room and the buses. Right, you have to walk through everything. I'm watching that celebration, and I, I, a memory I suppressed for over 30 years like, came back to me. <laughs> I remember that. I felt so bad for those Harbor kids. The trophies out there yeah. in their face, the fans are rushing the film, thinking, God, this was like my senior year when we experienced the same thing. In fact, Carson's Diablo dad, Ray, did that game with Paul Higgins. So it's that's kind of funny how 30-something years later... Athletes in motion. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Then, so yeah. uh, I watched and I felt for those kids, but huge props to uh, CDM for getting that it done. That game uh, lived up to the hype, too. It sure did. Ten straight years. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things in this world where, you, you know, movies, television shows, whatever the case may be, games, where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. That lived up to the hype. That game was phenomenal from start to finish. The energy there, it was so much fun. The fans were great on both sides. Just everything about that game, it, ex it exceeded you know, the expectations of everyone. So there's I a great backstory. I'm up top filming. You're on the sidelines. Yeah, of the game. I was down on the sideline. And the week before we did our prediction show, and you picked uh, <laughs> Harbor, I picked CDM. And so about five minutes don't go in the game. It's still contested. Mm -hmm. I finally go down just to watch the end. I want to see kind of the end and how it all plays out. The defensive back, Aiden Walsh. Number 24. The, so I'm watching him and the receivers because him, their cornerback for CDM and the receivers for Harbor were kind of going at it. They're, yeah. It, you know, there's the game and there's the game within the game. They were talking a lot of smack back and forth. It was extremely competitive. They were fired up. It was yeah. great. So I'm watching him and sure enough, the very next play, he looks at you. You don't really quite see or hear him. He goes, hey, Sunset Rewind, how's that prediction working out for you? <laughs> and he pointed at I'm me. I'm laughing hysterically. So I'll tell you what just happened. <laughs> yep. So then in the next play, what, what did you say to him back after that? Play? I uh, just looked at him. I said, good job. And I gave him like the little, I said, good job. And I gave him the little thumbs up. You know, I acknowledged it. And I was like, yeah. So going forward, we probably shouldn't interact with the players on the field if we want to not incur the wrath of the coaches. But that was funny. So we actually, so I said to you, listen, we got to interview this guy the second the yeah, game's absolutely. over. So we beeline right to him. We have that interview. Cole, can you pull that up <laughs> while it loads? And so this was Aiden Walsh and Kevin Dole. Walsh, Aiden, the first thing I want to ask you is the number 10, does that mean anything to you? Uh, you know, 10, I wrote it on my wrist. Uh, decade of dominance, so that's our thing. We've been saying it all week. Sorry, my voice is kind of lost right now. But, uh, yeah, just big game, 10, 10 years in a row. You know, there's a lot of big plays tonight, but I think the biggest was you calling out the man to the left of you right up yeah, here. Yeah. I had faith in you guys. I picked you. For whatever reason, he didn't. Is there anything you'd like to say to him now that the game is over that you didn't say to him in the game? Um, you need to, don't, don't sleep on CDM ever. No. We will always, I think we will always prevail at this point. Props to the We're undefeated. Great job, man. Point. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, congratulations. Great good luck next week yeah, and good luck you. in CIS. Thank you. So, Dole, being the honorable man you are, you want to explain the get up right now? All right. Aiden Walsh. The Sea Kings are the true champions. They won the Battle of the Bay. And to the rest of the Sea King Nation, I acknowledge your greatness. You are the true champions of Newport Beach for 2022. Now, you know, the Sea Kings, not the Sea Wizards. That's an interesting well, staff you chose. But I like the crown. We do need to get a trident. That's well, for sure. For it's sure. on order. I am, this is my Sea King acknowledgement. And I wish you guys all the best. And get her done next week, obviously. And... Do a great job in CIF, too. We're pulling for you guys. All right. Dole owned it. Good job. Well, that wasn't the only game going on, right, in uh, no. Sunset League play. We had another one. Uh, Los Alamitos. Took was on playing. Huntington Beach. Now, remember, last week they were playing Edison for the, not the official championship, but the winner of that was in pretty good shape. Yeah. But it wasn't going to be an official game until last Friday. So, cool. Let's go ahead and pull that one up on the monitor. And this wasn't much of a match. Early on, Huntington had one highlight. Um, Dante Bell throwing a deep route to my, one of my favorite receivers, A.J. Vandermaid. And really, that's good defense. I mean, he's with them hip to hip, but A.J. just does a great job pulling it up. And that would be about it for Huntington as far as big plays on the night. Um, it was all Los Alamitos. That would be a great uh, track meet, A.J. Vandermaid versus Makai Lemon. You know, I might watch track this year in the Sunset League just to <laughs> yeah. see how these guys going at it because that league is so deep receiver, it's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so now here was an interesting story. Los Al rested about half their team. Remember, we were talking about so much about Henderson. Yep. Well, this guy, Anthony League, is only a sophomore. I want you to watch this play. Los Al's going to pull their center and try to kick out that defensive end from Huntington Beach, but the defensive end does a good job shutting it down. We call that wrong arming. So the center does a good job of now he's going to make that a reach block or he's going to log him. The running back sees that, bounces it outside, even though it's supposed to go inside. So that's a nice job by the center and the back being on the same page. And I'll just let his that's running do its 
talking for him. That's great read and react football by league there. And that just happens so fast. So, I mean, that's a great job by the back end of the lineman being on the same page. All right, later in the game, best name in the Sunset League, Jamiron. Myron itself is a great name. Right, right. Tron, Tron. Baker, only a freshman. Malachi Nelson, who we know all about, is going to find him on what's essentially a seven-yard curl. He's going to turn around, catch the ball, shake one defender, shake another defender. Remember, he's only a freshman. And again, just like that with the backups, and the LaSalle's rolling. The separation he created on his route was phenomenal. Yeah, you got to respect the speed. So again, Gavin Porch, he's been around a while. Malachi Nelson, watch him in the pocket. He's going to buy a little time just by stepping up, avoiding the sack, gives Porch enough time to drag across the end zone, finds his receiver, and again, touchdown was it was just all LaSalle all night long. And then later in the game... Great footwork there, too. You know, I want you to watch the offensive line on this play because we talk about so much the running backs of Los and how good they are, and they are. But at what point do we start recognizing the offensive line? Because these guys are getting big yards, and there's always something behind that. All right, it's going to be zone right, and they're going to try to cut to the left with that wing back. All right, so look at that. Blocked, 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 blocked. Looks like you a got, wall. I mean, that's just a wall. something I would show if I was running an offensive clinic in terms of how Absolutely. to block zone right. And now look at the back. I can go here. I mean, he's got choices. You're looking for that gap. He makes the best choice because go straight up the middle, and he's off to the races. And there's, nice job they're the that receiver. good, low sell that they can run zone right to the boundary too. Yeah, I mean, they can run it wherever they want with that offensive line and those backs. And then the passing attack threat. It's just it's too much. So it was low sell all night long. Early on, they dominated. And uh, just a great job by that staff. They won their third straight. Third Sunset straight. League title, something that hasn't happened in the 50s. In fact, I'm going to ask a trivia question. And Kent Bikel, you don't get to answer this because you're the one that gave it to me. Yeah. What team, and you can put it in the comments, has the record for most consecutive Sunset League championships and most has the most Sunset League championships? I think I know the answer. And you don't get to answer. Okay, Let the okay. fans but comment. I do, so, I, yeah, I talked with Kent about this. Too. Who has the record for most Sunset League championships and most consecutive I'll give you a hint. Los Al's closing in on that record. Right. They got one more if they can pull it off next year, but um, something to think about. Oh, also, it was uh, homecoming for Los Al. They invited night. the 2002 CIF championship team back. Coach Barnes was flipping the coin was at the Sean field. Sean Clark there? Sean Clark was there, All former right. Sunset League defensive MVP. That's awesome. Um, Antoine Carson, I don't know if you remember that name. He was yeah, a well, Corp Award winner. Yeah. yeah, won it at the University of Arizona. So they had their championship team back. Uh, and Los Al won their 25th straight league championship. So... Great night for Griffin That's Nation. A great night. They all went back Griffin. to the Griffin Grill after and had a big celebration with all the coaches and players. Uh, not players. I don't know if the players were there. I wasn't there, but I know a lot of the old school players who came shut up. So great night for Los Al. They won their championship third straight year. Um, if I had a Griffin hat, I'd tip it to you. But and they uh, they moved up in the Cal Preps ranking too. Right now they're uh, sitting at number four. Were it to end today? That's huge because that means they're home. They'd have a home game against Long Beach Poly. Oh, I'd love to see that. Match. Wouldn't that be great? Imagine that at Veterans Stadium, Long Beach Poly. And Los Alamitos. Stay tuned. CF's coming up. Good that time would of the be year. Awesome. What do you got for us? Well, let me get the computer up here real quick. All right. So the Bell game took place as well. Edison and Fountain Valley renewing their ancient rivalry for another season. You know, and that's a, a rivalry that goes back to 1975. So they've been battling yeah. for quite a while now. And it's a lot of tradition there. I, you know, we went to that. Uh, Taco eating contest last week. That was fun. And We're gonna I know do that on the fan zone. Yeah. We got both, that covered. Both schools. I mean, the one year I did coach at Fountain Valley, I've never seen anything like it that Bell Week. Uh, the whole school is covered in posters. I know Edison does the same thing. So it's a real special game. Uh, Barron's probably wished it would have turned out a little different. You know, Edison took care of business 50 to nothing. But, you know, it's Looking still. Looking to win their 18th straight. Yeah, and win their 18th straight. But, I mean, still, you know, you love stuff like that in high school football. These rivalry games are so much fun. We happen to have two of the best in all of Southern California in one week. So, uh, let's go ahead and go to the highlights, please, Cole. So, here you see Carter Hogue for the Chargers. Just kind of running forward there. You see him spot shadowed. He stops, and look who's in the backfield. Tucker Tripp is lined up at a running back, not as a slot receiver there. Awad just dumps him a little screen pass there. Look at this block by Ashton Hurley. Watch the pancake here. 
Oh, he took out two, three defenders. <laughs> Freeze up. Ashton. Tucker tripped again in the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Well, I like that because you're getting the ball to your athletes in open space. And then you get that kind of downfield blocking. I mean, that's outstanding. That's a great That was job awesome, that. wasn't it? Yeah. So here we have Awad dropping back to pass. I want you to watch all four receivers for Edison. They're just running a simple clear out route. They're all just going to run streaks here. Are we going to open up the underneath? Let's see. Look at Carter Hogue here. Oh, yeah, kind of like stalls in the backfield. Looks like he's setting up the block to protect for a wad, and then... Yep, they sneak him out. Great concept. And again, you got one-on-one -on -one with an athlete in open field. You clear all those defenders out with your go routes. Good concept. Makes a couple guys miss, 35-yard gain. Here we're back to the action with a wad dropping back to pass. Look at that downfield vision he has. He's looking at the whole field, checking out what's going on in front of him. Perfect back shoulder throw. Tucker Trip with another touchdown. Oh, trip had a good night, all right. Great night for Tucker Trip. Good to see him getting back into the mix. And then finally for the Chargers here. And that was played at Orange Coast College, correct? That's at Orange Coast That's College, That's a great correct. venue. We have Dylan Huges, or Hugus, excuse me. He's the tight end. Look Dylan H. How about Dylan that? Dylan H. Look where he's lined up. He's lined up in a wing position. And what he's going to do is he's just going to move right down the line. Here's another great, incredible, you know, play calling concept by Coach Grady. Watch where he goes. He just kind of sneaks down the line. He's unnoticed. Carter Hogue is in the backfield. We got a little read option play, and Hogue's going to sell it like he has the ball, and he's going to run to the right. But notice the tight end leaking out here. Completely yeah, that's uncovered. That's tough to defend. You know, you got action going one way. You're leaking back across the field the other way. I, you know, I've stolen more plays from watching the Sunset League this year that I'm going to implement going forward. I, I just love the concepts they come up with. It's, it's really sound football, and it's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Easy money for the Chargers. So we were able to catch up with Coach Grady after the game and also Logan Gregory of Edison. You guys pick up a 50-0 win over Fountain Valley. You guys shut them out. Let's talk about your team's win and uh, what does it feel to pick up this win today? Yeah, we knew coming in, as long as we executed, we'd be perfectly fine. We did just that. We just the scoreboard. Yeah. You had a pick six today, man. Take me through that play. Oh, uh, you know, I was man on the running back. I was flying out to him and uh, it was a tip ball. I kind of just got lucky, you know. Just came right to me, ran in. What was the game plan heading into this game for you guys, man? Just run our base stuff and execute, you know, and we did just that. You guys have one more game against CDM and then a possible playoff berth. Um, how do you feel about the team going forward into the playoffs? Yeah, I feel great. We just got one more game to go, and we'll go from there. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll go for the playoffs. Congrats on the win, man. Thanks for your time. Coach Grady, you guys pick up a 50-0 win over Fountain Valley. What does a win like this mean? Oh, it's just uh, just the game in general as a whole is awesome. You know, it's a 53-year you know, rivalry, really. And um, just coming in here and playing well you know, always feels good. So. Talk about the play. Your defense, they shut Fountain Valley out. They played well. Um, special teams played well. Just talk about the overall defense and special yeah, teams. Obviously, I think we were, we were keyed all night by, by defense and special teams. I, I think we had maybe two like real possessions in the second half on offense. That's it. Defense played lights out. We had three block punts. And, uh, yeah. You have one more game left. How do you feel about your team going into the playoffs? I feel great about our team. I love our team. Um, we've got... To me, we have a true team. We have a bunch of guys that care about each other and, uh, and play for one another, play for the guy next to them. And uh, I feel great about our team. Obviously, we'll take the weekend to get healthy and go back Monday ready to work. How's it feel to win that trophy? It's awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. When it's, when it's never easy, it's always, it's always sweet. Congrats on the win, Coach. Right, Thanks for your So, obviously, congratulations to Edison getting the job done, winning the Bell game again, and they won that rivalry series. You see that's sponsored by the United States Marine Corps, so that's a cool little trophy that Coach Grady had with him. Again, um, as far as the playoffs go, Edison's 8-1. and one. They've got one more game, and as it stands right now, Cal Prep's coach, Edison, has moved up to 7 because Chaminade lost the other day. So if it were all to end today and we went to the playoffs, Edison would be playing St. John Bosco. All right, well, stay tuned. That's going to be good stuff. And let, let me just say one thing to, to Harbor and Fountain Valley. As a player and a coach, I've been on both ends of streaks. Yeah. I remember when I was at UCLA, we had won eight straight against SC, SC and yep. that was the best. And then as an alumnus in the 2000s, when Pete Carroll came to town, 
And I thought that was never going to end. I mean, they're winning national championships, Rose yeah. Bowls, beating UCLA. I'm like, I just couldn't take it anymore. But I'll never forget, <laughs> legendary coach John Selby, who's a big SC guy, he said, Coach, listen, dynasties do not last forever. They will right. come to an end at some point. And when you're going through it, it just seems like it's never going to end. But, you know, Fountain Valley, Harbor, keep your head up. You guys have got great programs. At some point, you'll have your day. Absolutely. It just wasn't this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. You got uh, 365 days to prepare for next time, and we'll get after it again next year. Those are good games, and I can't wait to go. And you know what? They, they play with pride. They play with integrity. I just – this once again, we say it every week, but it's true, and every week we find uh, n- new evidence to support it. This is the best high school football league in the United States, the Sunset League is. So let's preview next week's show real quick. A couple things. We're going to, so next Sunday, CIF comes out and we're going to have Kent Bikel on. He's kind of the CIF guru slash expert. He uh, does Boy, a lot of research on that. And so we're just going to kind of be shooting all day long and releasing the shows as the seedings come out. Correct. And we'll get them out as soon as we possibly can. As soon as this thing's done, we'll start editing it. And, uh, you know, any comments or questions you have, put it down in the comments this week and we'll try to answer it for CIF. We're going to talk a lot about that in the fan zone after this. Um, and then why don't you talk about this, the website real quick? The website. Hey, we have a great website, sunsetrewind.com. If we could pull my screen back up again, Cole. By the way, I didn't even know about that. I knew we had one, but it goes into a lot more detail yeah. as far as the games go. You know, Taryn Rodriguez and Ramos are two of Rosters, our writers. Rosters, everything. They, Eric Ramos and Taryn Rodriguez do such a great job. Well, they write up the game. They and give they you do stats. The, they mm-hmm. do. We just kind of break down the video footage, but they go a lot deeper. So if that's something you're interested in, you're one of those high school football junkies that just can't get enough, go to the website, check it out. There's a lot of stuff on there. There is news, schedules, results. You can get updates. It's almost like it's like an online newspaper. One of the other great things about it is, is it gives you the opportunity to sponsor Sunset well, Rewind and contribute to the high school community. So one of the things we're trying to do going forward is grow this product in terms of production, in terms of yep. people we have at the games, in terms of overall value. And you know the studio, they don't give it to us for free. No. The equipment's not free. We got to pay our reporters. And so what our goal is, or what we're hoping is to find a sponsor for each team. If we can get six sponsors, one for each team, that would be great. And if you go to that website, all you got to do is put your name, your contact info, and we'll get back to you ASAP. In fact, Jason, our boss, said he'll make it worth your while. So if you've got a company like real estate, car dealership, whatever, and you're trying to expand your product. We when we're really doing highlights, we'll, show, we'll mention your company's name after each touchdown. Yeah. Um, so just reach out to us on that website. And if you're and, on that website, you can go to this tab right here that says contact us. You just click on that. Super user friendly. You're going to fill in the information there and then under area of interest click on that and you just select sponsorship and then you can drop us a little note here if you want and we'll get back to you like ASAP. rapidly and, yes. and jason said he will make it worth your while so if you know you like i said if you got a business you're looking to expand uh, and get the word out there what a great way to do it so um, absolutely check it out we appreciate it. it helps the channel also if you hit like and subscribe on the youtube algorithm that helps us big time um so yeah, great week, though. There's a su- subscribe button right here on the sunsetrewind.com page as well. But yeah, another great week in the books, Coach. Week 10, nine games played. One more week of the regular season, then we get to the playoffs. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go.